Mitochondrial diseases are problems in energy generation. So we eat food, sugars, fats and proteins, and we have to convert the energy in the foods to energies our cells can use. So the mitochondria are really important to essentially every organ in the body. And so mitochondrial disease is when that isn't working properly. And uh, so people suffer from all sorts of different conditions. There are a number of people in the community who suffer from severe mitochondrial disease and as this is an inherited disorder, whole families can be severely affected. I first became aware of mitochondrial disease when my brother was diagnosed in 1998. Since that time, many other members of my family, including me, have been diagnosed with mitochondrial disease. Mitochondrial diseases um, are actually 300 different diseases, so there's quite a bit of variability, but many of the children die in the first days or weeks or months of life, um, and at the moment we have no effective treatments. It's gone on to claim the lives of my brother and my mother and other loved ones in my family, and as far as we know, it's impacted every generation of my family. At the moment, one child born in Australia every week will develop a life-threatening form of mitochondrial disease. Therefore, there's interest in mitochondrial donation because it's a new technology which offers potential hope of reducing the risk of transmission of mitochondrial disease to future generations. Mitochondrial donation has been pioneered in the UK and it's a way to allow couples to have their nuclear genes put into um, a healthy mitochondrial DNA background using a donor egg so that the child will be at, uh, at much reduced risk of having disease. But there are some special features of this technology. It involves using genetic material from more than two people. And for this reason, it's currently prohibited by our legislation in Australia. When our laws were written, mitochondrial donation was not possible. We need to now change the law if it is going to be a possibility. But we need to think about the implications. We need to think very carefully about whether we want to use technologies where DNA changes can then be inherited in subsequent generations. A further issue is about donors. This technology needs donor eggs in order to work and how do we use them in the process? What are their rights and interests as well? We also have to ask ourselves the question, are there more effective ways of doing this? Maybe less complex, maybe simpler, and then a further implication is if we say yes to mitochondrial donation, does that mean that we're then saying yes to something else as well, like choosing other kinds of diseases that might not be as serious or choosing human traits? And for something as important as this, I think we need to be as, as confident as we can be that we're offering people the best path forward. We've brought together information from a range of experts in science, in medicine, in ethics and the law to help you explore the issues before you tell us what you think. So options for people who have mitochondrial disease in their family are a mixed bag. They have several options available to them. So they could choose to not have children at all. They could choose to look at adoption or fostering of children. They could become pregnant and uh, carry a natural pregnancy but have it tested for um, the genetics. Or they could uh, create an embryo through IVF and have that tested for the genetics. Um, or they could use an egg donor or somebody, you know, who, a completely healthy egg. All of them are good options but they're, they're not, none of them are really very viable. So for families who have a high chance of passing on mitochondrial disease to their children, at the moment there's not a huge number of options for them and for those options that do exist, some of them mean that they won't be able to have a child who has a genetic relationship with both of its parents. And for many families that's a very important thing and it is a key driver for people to seek mitochondrial donation. I think mitochondrial donation just expands the options. So that people will still have to use IVF, um, it, it may not be effective, we don't know that yet, but it's certainly creating another option for people to have their own genetic children, which is very important to them. But it's important that we understand that it differs in some really key ways from our current standard IVF practices. And those are that we'd be combining the components of eggs from two different women that we would be utilizing DNA from three different individuals, and that the new gene combinations that we create would be inherited by subsequent generations. 
And there's also some really big unknowns about the biology. We don't exactly understand how the mitochondria are going to replicate in the embryo and whether or not the disease may rebound. We know that there is some risk of carryover mutant mitochondria and therefore that there is some risk that the child who may be born may have mitochondria disease. I guess one of my concerns in this is the child is the, the only person in all of this who, who cannot give consent. In the UK it's gone through a really exhaustive series of, of preclinical tests, scientific review, ethical review, um, community engagement, uh, and it's now going ahead in clinical practice. Um, we still don't know everything about the, the potential risks of mitochondrial donation, however many researchers believe that those risks are relatively low um, compared to the, the community risk of having a child with disease and that it's an appropriate time to implement this into clinical practice. It's important here to have a balanced conversation. Mitochondrial donation offers a lot of hope to couples who are at high risk of having a child with mitochondrial disease. At the same time, it's important not to overhype what this technology can do. It is not a cure for mitochondrial disease, yet what it can offer is another reproductive option for couples who don't have very many at the moment. My hope for my family and for all people affected by mitochondrial disease is that they have available to them the choice to use mitochondrial donation to avoid transmitting mitochondrial disease to the next generation of Australians. It's important that we consider not only the opportunities that this technology offers, but that we consider um, the risks and the unknowns. If it's going to come within our legal framework, we need to consider the implications for the donors of the DNA, for the parents of the child, and for the future child and their children. The seriousness of this technology means that it's not just up to scientists to decide, it's not just up to the government to decide. We want to hear a wide range of, of views and ideas about whether this is something that Australia should make legal. We want you to think about this new technology, have a look at the issues paper on our website and tell us what you think. Should Australia change the legislation to enable mitochondrial donation to be introduced into clinical practice?